We are grateful to gather with you today uh, to commemorate this wonderful event. It may seem like it wasn't a wonderful event, but it really was. We honor the saints that built this beautiful city and then were forced to leave it in 1846. These members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints gave their all to build this city and they gave their all to leave it behind as well. Today, as we journey where they journeyed, we have the wonderful blessing and opportunity to think about them, to think about their sacrifices, and to ponder about their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that motivated them to take that journey and leave this behind. As I read their stories this week in preparation for this event, a story from the Book of Mormon about the prophet Lehi came to mind. Lehi was a pioneer as well. He was commanded to take his family from Jerusalem and leave behind everything and go to a place that he'd never seen before, that he didn't know where it was. Yet, just a short time into that journey, he testified to his wife and family, I have obtained a land of promise. He wasn't there yet. He didn't know how far it was until he got there. We know now that it was thousands of miles. Yet, he declared, I have obtained a land of promise. The Lord had promised it, and he had utmost assurance that it would come to pass. I am sure that those saints that had read this story in the Book of Mormon that left in 1846 were comforted by his journey. Now as we walk, I invite you to purposefully think of them to talk of them, to share the stories of the people whose names you carry, and to ask one another about them, that we might honor their memory and remember their faith in their Lord Jesus Christ, their courage, and the sacrifices that they made. Whether this is your first time participating in this event like me, or your 10th time, or your 50th time, our purpose is the same. We come to remember them so that our strength in our Savior Jesus Christ can also be strengthened. Three weeks ago today, my wife and I began traveling from Salt Lake City to Nauvoo to begin our mission here, presiding over these sacred historic sites. And as we did so, it quickly dawned on me that we were traveling roughly along the trail that many of the people that you're representing here today blazed. I thought of them as we passed through Wyoming and along the Platte River of Nebraska as we stopped at Winter Quarters in Kingsville and in particular as, as we stopped in the way stations of Mount Pisgah and Garden Grove in Iowa. I reflected on their struggles as they slogged their way through the spring muds of 1846. And then as we arrived at the Mississippi River and I saw that it was frozen over, I remembered that some of those saints were able to pass over this great river on the ice. However, as we made that trip, I recognized that the big difference between our trip and theirs was not the fact that we were going in the opposite direction that they did, nor the fact that our trip took less than three days, but the fact that we knew where we were going. We knew our destination. On the map, we knew where Nauvoo was. We knew that we'd have a comfortable house here that we could live in. But as the people you represent here today lined up on Parley Street and got ready to, and began crossing this great river, they didn't know where they were going exactly. But they knew that God would lead them there and provide a home for them 
and they trusted in him. Now, in connection with that, I'd like to share with you, uh, very briefly, because I know it's cold, two pioneers from my family tree. The first is my fourth great-grandmother, Abigail Mead McBride, whose name is on a tag that my wife wears, somewhere here, <laughs> and who she is representing. Abigail was an elderly widow living about 20 miles west of Palmyra when she embraced the gospel, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ in the early 1830s and joined the church. She, along with several of her children and grandchildren, gathered with the saints in Kirtland and then later began their trek from Kirtland to Missouri only to arrive in Illinois and find that there was an extermination order aimed at the saints in Missouri. And so they paused in Illinois and eventually settled in Nauvoo. On January 27, 1846, Abigail was blessed to receive her endowment in this beautiful temple that they had sacrificed so much to build in Nauvoo. Shortly after, she, along with thousands of other saints, left that beautiful temple and their homes, lined up on Parley Street, and crossed this great river, heading into the unknown. She arrived in the Salt Lake Valley on October 1st, 1847. And seven years later, at the age of 77, passed away in Ogden, Utah. But as a result of her faith, dedication, and perseverance, she left a legacy that is cherished by a, um, a very large posterity in the church. Now to me, Abigail is representative of the thousands of other pioneers who participated in this epic migration. She was a common member of the church like most of them were, but was very extraordinary like most of them were. Now, the second pioneer in my family that I'd like to share with you is also represented by my wife. In fact, she is my wife, Sandy, who is a young teenage girl joined the church, the only member of her family. Little did she know what that choice, what the Lord would require of her as a result of that choice. Little did she know of where the Lord will take her through her life, including a series of missions in South America that spanned the majority of the last decade. And yet she is a pioneer in her family. I've also pondered about her wonderful parents who are not members of the church, who may not fully understand the choices that she's made but nevertheless are very understanding and very supportive. Many of the pioneers that you're representing here today had family members, not members of the church, but nevertheless understanding. Others were not so blessed. I also reflect on the many missionaries and friends that we came to know and love in South America. Many of them are the first members of the church and pioneers in their families. Some of them have understanding family members. Others have sacrificed greatly for their faith. Now, to me in a very real way, what the pioneers you represent here today did 
as they lined up on Parley Street and began crossing this great river is a type and a shadow of what pioneers across the world are doing today. Last year, due to the worldwide pandemic, you weren't able to gather together and commemorate the milestone 175th anniversary of the exodus from Nauvoo. In a way, what we're doing today is that milestone commemoration. We're just doing it a year late. The pandemic has caused great hardship and trials for people throughout the world. However, the Lord has a marvelous and merciful way of providing blessings as a result of adversities for his faithful disciples. And one of the great blessings to come as a result of this pandemic, a great blessing from the Lord, is the technology that was implemented to enable people from all over the world to experience Nauvoo and the church's historic sites. In other words, the Lord, through this pandemic, has provided access to the church's historic sites to millions of pioneers throughout the world. Now, since arriving, I felt very impressed with the responsibility to continue expanding that access to millions of pioneers throughout the world, many of whom will never be able to come here physically so that they too can experience and connect with Nauvoo and rejoice in this pioneer heritage and legacy of faith that belongs equally to all those throughout the world that embrace the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs>